Hi, Drew Povey from RubySketch here, makers of PlusBec, which gives you the power of BIM, parametric modeling and estimating inside of SketchUp, and the makers of BIMBits, the free 3D model library. In this video, we're going to do a SketchUp 2018 Pro review, and we're gonna focus on layout. First thing that we're gonna talk about is how you can now insert DWG files directly inside of layout itself. To do which you just go File, Insert, find the DWG, and select Open. Now there is a few different ways that you can import it, which we'll discuss. And we're gonna start with Paper, Space, and we're not going to select SketchUp Model Reference. Just press OK. As you can see, you have now uh, imported the DWG file. Now it doesn't understand uh, line types though, so you are going to need to go through and quickly clean it up. However, the advantage is that layout recognizes the DWG layers and it groups each individual layer so you can change them en masse. To do so, all you need to do is keep on double clicking into the different groups until you can select each ind individual layer or group, which means now if I was to make a change to the stroke color, the line type uh, and thickness, etc., it would do it uh, to all of those uh, objects at once. And I can just quickly and easily go through and change everything in my model. Like so. The other way is going back into File, Insert, again find the DWG, select Open, and this time we are going to do it from Paper Space, but we're going to select SketchUp Model Reference and press OK. As you can see, it's now inserted it, but it is different to the paper space and without the SketchUp uh, box ticked. As you can see, no text has come through. Uh, it still splits the text and the um, title block, etc., but it gives you the ability to now open this in, as a SketchUp file. And obviously, this is what it looks like in SketchUp. You've got all of your DWG layers and you can modify and edit it and whatever you change will automatically update in layout. The final way is going back and selecting insert, selecting the file again, and this time you can actually choose it from model space. And again, you have the option to even uh, select the SketchUp model reference also. This one you will need to scale accordingly. The other thing you can do now is you can actually select individual objects to be locked, just like you can in SketchUp. So you can right click, and you're gonna select lock on this, um, rather than doing it or locking only by layers. You can also array and offset, and you can now multiply or divide it. So for example, I'll offset, and then I'm gonna say times three. Or again, I could draw another shape. I could offset it, and I could say divided by two. This next one is really cool. You now have the ability to group objects, which is nothing new, but you can control the visibility of, of grouped and how you look at grouped objects. So if I double click back into this group, just like in SketchUp, I have the ability to hide the rest of my model so you're not getting distracted by any other geometry. And you can control this in a few different ways. First, you can go into View, and then you can go into Group Edit, and you can select Hide Rest of Document, this means that no matter what, when you click into the group, it will hide all of the other non-related geometry. The other way is by going into your file and your document setup. You will now see that you have groups and you actually have the ability, again, to hide them or to sim simply make them lighter. So if I double click into this group, they're getting lighter. You can now also create multi-viewport dimensions. What does this mean? It means that you might have a really large section or detail and you want to create it or split it so you can obviously make it smaller. So in the past, you could always do this. I'll just quickly make a copy of this, drag it down, and essentially you were able to get the viewport, make a copy of it again, and adjust it accordingly. Like so. Oh, I'm still off. There we go and then you would be able to arrange it, but you couldn't dimension between them. Now, layout automatically understands that these are from the same 
reference points and therefore will dimension correctly. The final feature that I'm going to talk about is probably something that most of you have been waiting for and that's the ability to be able to draft in layout at a set scale. I'm going to demonstrate in metric but obviously you can do the same in imperial. You'll now see a scaled drawing tab and in here you can select make scale drawing and then you can uh, select or choose your scale. So I might want to start drawing it say 1 is to 20 and then I can obviously choose the way I want it to read. And now when I start drawing a line, if I look down at my length, I can type in actual real one is to one dimensions that will automatically be scaled to the one is to 20. For example, I might type in three meters. If I dimension this, three meters. However, you can change the scale at any time. Again, simply select it and just change the scale. So I might decide that I actually want it to go to one is to 10. And as you can see, the dimension goes with it. Maybe I want it to be one is to 100. Obviously that's a single line, but you can create full 2D details in this way. Finally, the graphics and speed have been significantly improved in this release, and you'll notice the difference right away. The line work reads clearer and crisper and everything just feels more professional. 